All right, so this is the last bit for our unit, lesson eight. I feel like we've had to rush through this a lot faster than we would have if it had been done in second semester like it usually is, but it's okay. Um, this is kind of just basically reviewing over what you already did the last two days. You're focusing on graphing equations that are in that slope intercept form, that y equals mx plus or minus b. Remember, m represents the what? What does m stand for? Slope. M stands for that slope. And what does the B stand for? The y-intercept. So we just want to make sure that you remember that. M is going to be our slope. Right? It says it right here. That's our slope. That B value is our y-intercept. Okay? And remember, whenever we are graphing, we always graph the y-intercept first. You always graph your B value first. Remember, it's a y-intercept, which is 0, comma b, whether it's plus or minus. If it's positive, it means it's going to be up at the top part of your y-axis. If it's a negative, it means it's going to be at the bottom part of your y-axis. Okay? Um, as reminders with slope, the way slope works with directions. Remember, slope can be used as a graphing point for directions. If it is a positive slope, a positive m, then that means you've got two directions that you can be going in. You can be going up and then to the right, or you could go down and then to the left. A double positive or a double negative will create a positive slope. If you happen to have a negative slope, a negative M means that you are either going to go down, which is negative, but then you're going to go to the right, which is positive, so that creates that negative. Or you might go up, but then you would have to go to the left. One of them would be positive while the other's negative. That's what creates that negative direction. And when you're looking at a graph, again, positive slope looks like this. Negative slope kind of has a dip going from top left to bottom right. That's what a line for negative slope looks like. So I had some of you asking before, how do I know whether the slope's positive or negative? If you're looking at a graph, that's what the graph would look like. If it's a positive slope, it looks like it's going uphill. If it's a negative slope, it looks like it's going downhill. Okay? Remember slope do. Puff, puff, positive. Nice negative. Okay? Who remembers what was this slope again? Zero. Good. And then when it's a vertical, it's called what? Undefined. Okay, just wanting to make sure you guys understand that. All right, so let's take a look at the following. We're given slope-intercept form, and now we have to go ahead and create the graph. So we have y is equal to 1 half x plus 3. Again, the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to graph the y-intercept at 0, 3. So looking at my graph, I'm going to start at 0. I'm not going to move anywhere left or right because, you know, your x isn't moving anywhere. Then I'm going to go up 3. 1, 2, 3. There's my first point. Then I'm going to use my slope. My slope is a 1 half. My slope is 1 over 2. That means two things. I'm either going to go up 1 and then 2 to the right, or I'm going to take the 1 and go down, and then I'm going to go 2 to the left. I can do either one of those. I can go up 1 to the right 2, up 1 to the right 2. I can keep doing that over and over and over again. Or I could do the opposite of it. I could go down one to the left two, down one, left two, and so on and so forth. Okay, and that's what my grid would look like. Again, it's always a good idea to have a straight edge to be able to connect them. It's 
creating a linear function, obviously, because it does have a slope, a constant rate of change. Constant rate of change indicates that it is linear. Is this proportional? Is this linear function proportional? No. Because no. it's not what? It's not through the origin. Okay, so I'm just going to keep asking and reminding you. It's not through the origin. That means it's not going to be linear. Let's do one more together. We have negative 3x plus 5. That plus 5 again, that's my y-intercept. That means I'm going to graph the first point at 0, 5. And then I'm going to use the slope. The slope is a negative 3. That could be a negative 3 over 1, which indicates that I would go down and then to the right. Or it could be a positive 3, meaning I'd go up, over a negative 1, which means I would go to the left. Either one of those will take me to the next point. I'm going to go up three to the left one, up three to the left one, and then I'm going to do the same thing in the opposite, down three to the right one. And I can keep doing this over and over and over again if I wanted to, but I don't feel like it. I'm just going to go ahead and connect. Okay, I want you guys to go ahead and do the next two graphs. Actually, you can, do, you can do these two graphs down here, and then on the back page, you can do these two graphs. Make note, though, of this. Do I have anything that I'm adding or subtracting? So what does that mean? It's a zero, which means that my... Well, I do have a y-intercept. It's at the what? Zero, zero, which is called the origin. So when you don't have an addition of a value or subtraction of a value, that naturally means that your value is at the origin, which means it's going to be proportional, isn't it? Every one of these graphs that I'm showing you right now are non-proportional because they all have a non-zero for their y-intercept. If it is proportional, then the equation will have no y-intercept listed because the intercept would be zero. Okay, go ahead and do those next four problems on your own. Let's take a look. For the first one that you did, your y-intercept was at negative four, so you should have graphed it down below. Then you should have gone up two to the right one, up two to the right one, or down two to the left one, down two to the left one, and it should have looked like this. I'll zoom in here, it's easier for you guys to see. Okay. For the next one, your y-intercept was at a zero negative one, so graphs it right here. Then you have a slope of negative two-thirds. That means that you're either going to go down because the, the 2 would be negative, you're going to go down 2 and then to the right 3. Or you would go up 2, but then go to the left 3, making the, the 3 the negative. Okay, one of those is considered to be a negative value. It doesn't matter which one. So I'm going to either go up 2 to the left 3, up 2 to the left 3, or down 2 to the right 3, down 2 to the right 3. And so you should have had a graph that looks like this. Okay. Let's go ahead and look at the next side. Remember, this is going to be loaded into Google Classroom if you need it. Okay, like I told you before, that if you do not have a value of plus or minus written, then that means your value is a zero. That means your value is a zero, so your y-intercept is at the origin, zero, zero. Okay, your slope is four-fifths, that means you're going up four to the right five, or you're going down four to the left five. So starting at your origin for your y-intercept, go up four to the right five, or go down four to the left five. And there's your graph. All right, and then if we are looking at our next example, x plus nine, 0, 9 would be your y-intercept. There isn't a value written here for our x, so what do we automatically know exists? A 1, right? A coefficient of a 1. So the slope is a 1 or 1 over 1. That means you go up 1, right 1, or down 1, left 1. 
and it looks like that. Okay, it's the same process over and over again. Graph your y-intercept, use slope as your direction. Any questions? Okay, Cardin, why don't you come on up and grab the notes here? All right, let's take a look at these ones. So given the graph, again, we're just practicing, it's right there. Given the graph, we're gonna practice writing our slope-intercept form. So again, identifying your y-intercept and then identifying your slope. Identifying the y-intercept, that's the really easy part. You just have to identify where it is that it crosses over the y-axis. So if we're looking at this very first graph, the first graph, we cross over the y-axis located right here. What point is that? We obviously know it's at zero something, right? Count it up. Go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You have that zero, nine. The reason I'm saying count it is because the numbers are kind of a little bit skewed off. So we're at the point zero, nine. So I know that my B value, I know my Y intercept, which is the B value, is going to be nine. Now we gotta identify the slope. So that means I need to find another point, another perfect point on my graph. There happens to be one located right here. There's also one located right here. I mean, I can find a whole bunch of them on my graph. It doesn't matter which one that I find. If I'm following it, first of all, is this a positive or negative slope? positive. So I'm going to write down that this is positive slope. So I know my slope M should be a positive value. I'm going to go up one and then I'm going to go to the right two. One over two. Or if I go to this point, I went down one, two, three, but then I went to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, negative 3 over negative 6 is still the same thing, 1 over 2. It doesn't matter which points you create. Remember, we talked about it before. All I'm really doing is creating a series of right triangles, aren't I? And the slope that's created by each of those right triangles is identical. They're proportional to each other because slope is the same no matter what two points on a line you, you choose. Okay? Okay. So now that I know what my B value is and my uh, M value, my slope value, I just plug it into my equation. Y equals one half X plus nine. Now be careful guys, when you're doing an IXL, if you forget to put in your variable, you'll get it wrong, okay? We had a student this morning who did the same thing. They typed in, but they forgot the variable x, so they got it marked wrong. Be careful about that. If you forget to write the x, it will be marked wrong. Okay, well, let's see here. Why don't you guys go ahead and do this example as well as the two examples on the next page. Identify your y-intercept. Identify your slope, and then put them into your formula. Let's take a look for this first one over here. Up to the right, you should have gotten a y-intercept of b, or, or sorry, a, a y-intercept of zero, and then a slope of negative five over four. It is a negative slope, and to go from one point to the next, we would either go down five and to the right four, or we could go up five and to the left four. So there's our equation. Y is equal to negative five over four X. If you put plus zero or minus zero, that's fine, but you don't need to. Y is equal to negative five fourths X. Okay, if we take a look at the second example you were supposed to do, our Y intercept was at negative six. And then our slope, we can keep going down two and then to the right one, or like what I did here, I found a point over here I wound up having to go up four and to the left two. 
4 over 2 and its negative slope can simplify to a negative 2. So we have negative 2x minus 6. And then for your last example, you also had the y-intercept at negative 6. And the slope goes up 7 and then to the right 2. Up 7 to the right 2, that would take you to your next perfect point. So 7 over 2x minus 6 would be the equation for that graphed line. All right, let's take a look at some of the tables, how to work it out when it is given to you as a table. So quick reminders again, your y-intercept is when x is equal to 0. When x is equal to 0, that's where your y-intercept will be. But the only table that we have an example of that has it already positioned is that first one. We have 0, 2. That's our y-intercept. So I know b is going to be equal to 2. Now for my slope, remember the rise is the change of your y values. The run is the change of your x values. If we are going from 2 to 8, that is an increase of 6. We happen to be increasing by 6 here as well. Notice that with my next one, though, I'm increasing by 8. And then with this one, I'm increasing by 10. That's okay. Because if I look at my run, I'm increasing by 3, increasing by 3, but then I increase by 4, and then I increase by 5. They happen to be equivalent to each other. If we're taking a look at it, we do 6 over 3 and 8 over 4 and 10 over 5. They're all going to come out to the same value, aren't they? 6 over 3 is the same thing as 8 over 4, which is the same thing as 10 over 5. They're all going to equal what? 2. 2 over 1 or just 2. So my slope happens to be a 2. So then I just plug it into my equation. Y is equal to 2X plus 2. Okay? Now again, if it does not give it to you, if they do not automatically tell you what your y-intercept is, you would have to actually figure it out. So we first have to find out our slope, our rise, and our run. Here, our rise, we are increasing by 3 each time. For our run, we are increasing by 2 each time. So that means that my slope is 3 over 2. Now, all I have to do is pick a point. Does it matter which point I pick? No, I can do 2, 5, I can do 4, 8, 6, 11, 8, 14. It does not matter. I just need to pick a point and substitute. I'm going to pick a point and substitute. I'm just going to go ahead and go with the first one. I'm going to pick 2, 5. Okay? So when I have y equals my mx plus b, I know that that's the equation that I'm trying to create. I already solved for my m. I already found that my m was 3 over 2. Now I'm just going to replace my y and my x. What is the y going to be replaced with? Which one of those values? Five. The 5. Good. What's the x being replaced with? The 2. So now we're just going to do 3 over 2 times 2, which gives me 3. So I now have 5 is equal to 3, and then don't forget you have this plus b at the side. And then we can solve. If we subtract 3 from both sides, we're going to get b is equal to 2. So there's our equation. Our equation is going to be, I'm going to write it up here, y is equal to 3 halves x plus 2. Go ahead and do the other table on your own. Let's take a look. You should have gotten the equation to be y is equal to 7 over 2x minus 12. Let's talk about how you got that. 
If you look at your slope, your slope goes 14 over 4 or 7 over 2 or 21 over 6. They all simplify to 7 over 2. I picked a 0.69 to plug into my equation. So I get 9 is equal to 7 over 2 times 6 plus the b. 7 over 2 times 6 comes out to 21. I would then subtract the 21 from the 9 and get negative 12 for my, my y-intercept. So there's where my equation is. y is equal to 7 over 2x minus the 12. All right, when we are dealing with points and we have to write in slope-intercept form, you have to remember your slope formula first. Remember slope formula with your slope formula. It is the difference of your y's over the difference of your x's. The difference of your y's over the difference of your x's. It does not matter which order you write your y's in, but it will matter which order you write the x's in based off of how you write the y's. If I do 2 minus 4, then I have to do 0 minus 1. If I do 4 minus 2, then I have to do 1 minus 0. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do 4 minus 2 over 1 minus 0. That's going to come out to 2 over 1, so there's my slope. My slope is a 2. I also happen to have my y-intercept being one of those points, isn't it? That's my y-intercept because of the fact that it has the 0 for the x. So there's my b value. My b happens to be a 2. So when I'm creating my equation, this is just y is equal to a positive 2 for the slope times x plus 2 for my y-intercept. That's an easy one. Now, if you have the situation like these, are either one of those the y-intercept? No. So then you're going to have to go along with what we did up here for the tables. You pick one of them to plug in and solve for your y-intercept. So first, let's find the slope. I'm going to subtract 18 minus the 8, and that means I have to do negative 1 minus the 3. 18 minus 8 is going to come out to a 10. Negative 1 minus 3 comes out to a negative 4. When I simplify, my slope comes out to a negative 5 over 2. So there's my slope, negative 5 over 2. I'm going to pick one of the points. It does not matter which point that I pick. I just have to pick one of them. I'm going to go ahead and pick this first one and substitute it. That means it's going to become 8 is equal to negative 5 over 2 times 3 plus b. Mario, you're talking his ear off and he's feverishly writing and you're not. You gotta write. You gotta focus. You gotta pay attention. Okay. Negative 5 over 2 times the 3. Negative 5 over 2, when we multiply it by the 3, it's going to give us negative 15 over 2. So we now have 8 is equal to negative 15 over 2 plus b. We're then going to just add negative 15 over 2, or sorry, add 15 over 2 to both sides. Okay, so we are going to get a fractional value for b. Our b is going to come out to 31 over 2. And then you just put it all into your equation. y is equal to negative 5 over 2 times x plus 31 over 2. Loaded into Google Classroom right now is your assignment for today. Make sure you're keeping up with your assignments. Yesterday's assignment of quizzes, that closes tomorrow morning. So if you did not do yesterday's quizzes assignment, it does close tomorrow morning. And then it goes in as an NTI if it's not finished. <laughs>